Hey everyone, last lesson we were looking at uh, molarity, so moles per litre as a concentration, and now we'll be looking at other units uh, to describe concentrations of solutions. Uh, one of them can be grams per litre, which we denoted there as G uh, over L, and this is a uh, concentration that is expressed as a number of grams of solute, so remember that's what we're dissolving, uh, dissolved in one litre of solution. And what we can say is, uh, an example is that if we had 200 mils of seawater, which had 4.2 grams of sodium chloride, uh, the concentration of the solution could be, would be, in this case, 21 grams per litre, or 21 uh, grams per litre using the notation. Uh, so this is different from the molarity which we were using before. Another one is percentage composition and weight to weight, so that's what the W to W means. Uh, it's expressed by mass uh, of solute in grams dissolved in 100 grams of solution. So it's the weight of the solution. And remember that water, one gram of water is equal to one mil of water. Another one is weight to volume. So instead of using the weight of the solution, we're using the volume of it. And it's expressed as the mass of solute in grams dissolved in 100 mils of solution. Uh, another similar one, which we now do volume to volume. So first one was weight to weight, then weight to volume, volume to volume, and it's expressed as the volume of the solute. So it's already been dissolved in uh, mils, and it's dissolved in another hundred mils of solution. Uh, parts per million in weight to weight. So that's um, a weight to weight. So make sure both of them are in weights when we do this and it's used for very dilute solutions because it's parts per million, so one millionth. Uh, so the mass of the solute is in milligrams and the solution is in kilograms because one milligram is one millionth of a kilogram, okay? So one milligram is one millionth of a kilogram, so therefore we can use parts per million. So this is really important to remember so we can speed up your answers in the question. So if it has milligrams, and it has kilograms, we can always use parts per million. Uh, sodium chloride solution with a concentration of 250 parts per million really contains 250 milligrams, remember milligrams here, in uh, each kilogram of the solution, so one kilogram of, say, water. And this is really important when reporting really, really dilute solutions. So that's when we were looking at, say, water testing before how we're looking at salt concentrations or phosphate concentrations in the water because it's very, very low. Um, it also can be used in looking at dissol total dissolved solids in drinking water. Fluoride levels, I remember, are very, very small and only usually about one part per million is added to the, the water that we drink uh, to reduce dental decay. And water supplies are usually very strictly analysed, remember, and we're looking for you know, possible pollutants, heavy metals, um, bacteria and things like that and so in particular we always look for lead, mercury and arsenic. Can you remember why? Uh, it's because they were toxic to humans or are toxic to humans. Uh, we also can look at the rivers and lakes for nitrogen, uh, nitrogen and phosphorus because remember uh, we were talking about eutrophication before and if these levels exceed uh, a certain number of parts per million, uh, quite a low number, then we can get algal blooms, which will choke the, the waterways and cause death to a lot of aquatic life. Uh, parts per million can also be expressed as weight to volume, so W to V at the top there. And it's the mass of solute in milligrams per one litre of solution. So remember when I said that one mil of water is equivalent to one gram of water? So we were saying before one milligram per kilogram. So we have one milligram in one litre because each kilogram is equal to a litre of water. Uh, to, we can also do this in volume to volume, and it's expressed as the volume of solute in microliters uh, for every litre of solution. And microliters are equivalent to the milligrams we were talking about. Other ones are molarity, which we already discussed in the previous lesson, and it's mainly used in chemistry because we're looking at moles. Um, also, weight percentage. So, for any mixtures that are not solutions, we usually use the weight-to-weight -weight percentage. So what we're looking at is like toothpaste. 
because it's not a it's not really a solution. We're mixing two things together and it's getting suspended in another um, paste type like uh, texture. And for these, it's like three, 39 grams of ammonium chloride in 100 grams of solution. So imagine it was like 30 grams of ammonium chloride in some sort of paste-like mixture, which weighed 100 grams. Uh, another one is similar, is weight to volume in percentage. And this is usually can be used for the most soluble substance, which is usually salt. And sodium chloride is an example. 36 grams of sodium chloride in 100 mils of solution. Uh, so the volume to volume percentage will be the percentage, but we're looking at two sets of volumes rather than weights before. And this is really used in medicines, and they will tell you how much of the medic medication is in the bigger, the bottle. It's also in alcoholic drinks. So if you look at a bottle of wine, it'll tell you the percent of uh, ethanol, which is the alcohol, um, per bottle as a percentage. So like 13%, 5%, like that. Uh, so parts per million, and remember parts per billion. So these are, of course, very, very small concentrations. We said that parts per million was one milligram per kilogram, and parts per billion is also uh, even for smaller concentrations. So what we usually use it for is to measure air pollution because these uh, changes in air pollution are always very, very minute changes. But even though they're so small, they cause a lot of problems for health. So we can look at the carbon dioxide in the atmosphere, and this concentration can be like 315 parts per million by volume. So what we're doing is saying the volume of carbon dioxide in a total volume because gases we can't really say um, moles or weights. Percent composition is usually for foods and what we usually look at is a per 100 grams of portion. And if you look at the uh, box of cereal or any food, they'll have a label there that tells you how much of like say sodium chloride is in there, how much sugar is in there, and they usually do it as a percent composition. So it will tell you that per serving of 100 grams, uh, there is a X percent of fat or X percent of sugar. So an example is a raw egg contains 75.5% water, and then 12.8% protein, and then the rest 10.2% fat. So what we're doing is looking at percentages of each of them. Uh, so what we were looking at before was the molarity, but molarity maybe not won't be so good to describe concentrations, especially for people who aren't scientific minded, or um, it's not really useful to use it because it's too dilute. So what we have are other means to um, to write down how a concentration can be expressed, and you know these can be weight to weight percentages. It can be like percent composition, parts per million, parts per billion. So you really have to look at what's appropriate uh, to use in your case. And usually in your chemistry course, we're going to be using molarity. So we can look at some questions to help us remember what, what's going on. So question six, a sample of tap water was found to contain 0 0.057, uh, 537 grams of sodium chloride, NaCl, per 250 grams of solution. Calculate the concentration of uh, sodium chloride in parts per million. So remember what parts per million was? It's milligrams per kilogram. So concentration is mass of solute, what we're dissolving in milligrams in the mass of solution in kilograms. So what we need to do is convert this 0 0.0537 grams to milligrams, which gives us 53.7 milligrams. And then we need to also then change the mass of the solution, which we had in grams, 250 grams, into kilograms. So that gives us 0.25. And then we calculate that, and it gives us 215 parts per million. Question seven, calculate how many grams of sodium chloride dissolved in 50 grams of 9% weight to weight solution of sodium chloride. So the mass of sodium chloride is 50 grams, which they gave us here, 50 grams. And we have 9%, so 9% 9 is nine over 100. So when we get nine over 100, it gives us 0 0.09. Times those together, and then we get 4.5 grams. So question eight, calculate the percentage composition of weight to weight of a hydrochloric acid solution containing 36 grams of hydrogen chloride and it's in 225 grams of water. So percentage weight to weight, remember 36 grams over 250, 225 grams. 
So that's the 36 grams here, 225 grams, percentage weight to weight. And then because it's a percentage, we need to times it by 100 and we get 16%. And question nine, calculate the percentage composition weight to volume. So remember weight to volume uh, of a silver nitrate solution containing 5.3 grams of silver nitrate in 125 mils. So 5.3 uh, 5 grams of the solute, remember, in 125 mils, because we have it in weight to volume, so we can leave it in weight and volume. And we make sure we always times it by 100 for percent. And it gives us 4.2%. So just summarizing, what we were doing is looking at other ways to express concentrations. And a lot of the time we'll be using percentage, say weight to weight, weight to volume, volume to volume. Uh, but there are other ways to so like parts per million, parts per billion. And this is to give us a greater range to express concentrations instead of just using molarity. Mm -hmm.